Step ready. Turn left. Pull up. Turn right. Player one.
Situation under control, Unit 5 out. Patrolman. Get him, boys! Come on, Sheriff. We're waiting for you. Sheriff, the bank has been robbed. The bank robbery. You can't hit the front side of the bar. Drop them iron. Don't shoot. You can't hit the front side of the bar. You can't hit the front side of the bar. Eat left! Eat left! 
party. Let's ride. Stop that stage! The stage holder. Virgin Interactive Entertainment presents Links for the Sega CD. Licensed from Access Software and developed by Papyrus Design Group.
How many players? Please enter player information. What would you like to do? Set atop the cliffs at the edge of the Pacific Ocean, the 36 holes of Torrey Pines North and South Courses are one of the finest and most picturesque municipal golf facilities in the world. They have been a popular stop on the PGA Tour for decades, and most of the great players in the world have appeared here. While the scenery is just as spectacular on the south course as it is on the north, you had better keep your concentration, or else this apparently simple looking course will tear you apart. First hole is a 438-yard par four that requires two longish shots, Steve. How would you play it? Well, Ben, the key to the first hole is to keep your tee shot left of the bunker on the right side of the fairway. Then you'll be able to approach the green from there. Let's go. Player one. on the fairway. Player one. Better hurry up. Player one. Player one. That'll play. On the green. Let's go. Player one.
Player one. Let's go. Player one. Player one. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. The second hole is a 336 yard slight dog leg to the right par 4, where a well hit tee shot will leave the player with just a short iron to the green. Steve? You must attack this hole down the right side, Ben, and the very longest hitters can almost reach. But don't hit your pitch behind the hole, very treacherous. Easy to three putt. Yes. Player one. In the rough. Player one. Better hurry up. Let's go. Player one. Player one. Let's go. Player one. On the fairway. Let's go. Player one. On the green. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. The third hole is a par 3 of 139 yards where club selection becomes a problem with the wind a factor, Steve. Yes, Ben, it's very downhill. And with the wind in your face and the downhill, it almost evens it out, but I'd always tend to play one club less.
Player one. That's definitely very short. On the fairway. Player one. On the green. Player one. Player one. Player one. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. The fourth hole is a 430 yard par 4 with the cliffs on the left and a long tee shot is required to get on the green in two shots. Make sure you keep it away from the bunker on the right but not too much. The water's there on the left Ben. Player one. In the rough. Player one. On the fairway. Let's go. Player one. On the green. Player one. Player one. Player one. Player one. Player one.
Player one. Let's go. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. The fifth hole is a par four of 390 yards with a very demanding tee shot, Steve. You absolutely have to thread the needle, Ben. But after you've done that, you set up a reasonably short iron to the green. And stay below the hole to avoid three putting. Absolutely. Player one. On the fairway. Player one. Better hurry up. Let's go. Player one. Better hurry up. Player one. On the green. Player one. Player one. Let's go. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. The sixth hole is a big swinging dogleg to the right of 520 yards, par 5, and it's up to the player to decide how much he can cut off the corner. But not too much, Ben. OB is hanging out there on the right, but it should be a birdie opportunity. Player one.
drawn it. In the spinach. Let's go. Player one. On the fairway. Player one. Let's go. Player one. On the green. Player one. Let's go. Player one. Let's go. Player one. Let's take a look at the scorecard. Mostly sunny skies today with brisk temperatures. Clear tonight with a low near 44. Tuesday morning solar time, an enormous explosion occurred in Pluto vicinity. It was quickly pinpointed to Charon, Pluto's moon. Transtemporal, the Titan-based corporation, is known to have a large research center on Charon, but there has been no communication with the facility since the explosion. This is Mendeley Eve to U35661 approaching. You've got the Lodestar and Iron Dog Bodine. I've been rolling in the outer for two weeks, so I would appreciate it. Lodestar, your ejector's too flat. You'll have to burn off two VUs or risk relaunch. Sorry, but I don't have enough deuterium to muss up a dandelion. Is that you, Ward? Stand by, Lodestar. U35661, I've been authorized to land you. Maintain attitude. You're now at zero, zero and passing the outer mark. You'll be fine, Tully. About 65 gigs. Yes, I know, Ward. Drop 
the frame at 56 Central, pick up our pay, and cradle her in the rank. Let's see if we can scare up something semi illegal to hold back. Right, Tully. You ought to be burning out of here in about four hours. T4 to B6 Central. Mort, how's Tully? We haven't seen the Lodestar around here in three years. Tully's been saying the next haul will be his last. Yeah, that'll be the day. That's Tully Boudin. Where you been, Tully? I'm telling hey, you. Hey, long time. Long, long time. I don't know. Right back, Baxter. What'll it be? Tully. Oh. <laughs> Nails. <laughs> Tully. William Head O'Bannon. Good to see you, Iron Dog. What brings you to the backside of Alcatraz? Big money. What else? You know any? <laughs> if I did, I wouldn't tell you, you bastard. <laughs> well, yeah. If you're buying, red line. Neat. Hey, did you hear about Andy Opal? The fuser? Well, as far as we could tell, Andy's bus was on Karen, unloading cargo, and Trans Temporal had that big blowout. Ooh. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear about that. Bodine. Tully Bodine? Yeah, could be. My name is William Snid. I represent Carl Slagan. Here's my card. I was wondering if we could have a moment together. Tully Bodine! I can't believe that you had the guts to haul that flying violation into my jurisdiction. Well, man's got to make a living, Francis. My God, it's good to see you two. I see all that graft and corruption has gone to your gut. <laughs> <laughs> check everyone's certification. A check for forgeries on the legits. Bodine, you've got exactly eight hours to pay your landing fine and get out of Mendeley, or I will impound that dump rail of yours, and I'm have it torn to pieces looking for stolen parts. Ah, uh, now venture nozzles, Francis. All I'm looking for is one last big haul, and you will never see me again. I'm quitting the rolling light. Tell you I know, you can't be serious. Wow, what a shame. Because, you know, I was just about to give you, I mean, I was going to give all of you people some real competition. This is my nephew, Byrne. He's a graduate of the Ronald Reagan Military Academy. He just had a three-year course at URAIL. And he's a certified outroller as of today. Congratulations. It's a great life. But Francis, he's going to need a decade or two in the outer before anybody here is going to call him an outroller. Well, I don't have that kind of time, Grandpa. That's enough, Byrne. You don't see much of Molly Matlock anymore. Molly and I are going into the hotel business on Colony Mars. Well, come to think of it, uh, Molly always did sort of have low standards. Yeah, real low. Hey. Forget it. You got just two hours. Get off my moon. Tully, get back to the outer where you belong. Burn! What was that all about? We were in the ranges together a long time ago. Wampa was my NCO. We used to date the same girl. <laughs> William Snid. Interplanetary dry goods. Look at this. Meet me at Bay 2844 South. Cargo waiting. Huh? The frame loaders are empty. I'm short on time. I thought you had cargo. Uh, don't worry about a thing, Mr. Bodine. I do have a frame. And I've been authorized to offer you full tanks and 52,000 gigs for a one-way haul to Bobos. <laughs> No questions asked, right? What are we carrying? There'll be a manifest as usual. Mr. Schlegen will pay in full once you deliver the cargo to Phobos Depot. 
Well, you'll have to pay my landing fee. Ah, everything will be taken care of, Mr. Bodie. All right, you got a trucker. Where's your friend? If you're not there to get the cargo in the next 16 minutes, it might not be there at all, right? Isn't that your jump truck down there now? Now let's get one thing straight. Lodestar is no jump truck. She's a vintage Nova UD2 with four Rolls-Royce RH-12 thrust tunnels. I mounted them myself. Mort, we've got 11 minutes to get to Bay 247 West. I've queried ahead to Bay 247 West and have the manifest. Would you like to see it, Tully? Yes, I would, Mort. 20? 20 live camels. Camel caravans are the most efficient way to move cargo across the rough Martian terrain. Huh. We're approaching the West Quadrant now. Turn in here, Tully. I should alert you, we've only got nine minutes to get to Bay 247. And the traffic is always heavy this time of day. Okay, Mort. Heads up. if you can't see the observatory. Accident ahead.
May I help you?
May I help you?
May I help you?
This is not the time for my awakening. Something's gone terribly wrong. Did you say something, Ruby? Oh, great. Don't tell me you're hearing voices now. But... Hurry up and get the dragon's eye. The timer's almost run out on the trap. Trap? What trap? Whoa! This trap! Ah! Why didn't you tell me about that earlier? I did, but you were too wrapped up in getting the jewel to listen. Oh, yeah. The jewel. Hold on, I've almost got it. Hurry, hero. Oh, uh, there. I got it. Watch that rumbling. Oh no, the exit's uh, closing. Let's get out of here. I'm okay, Ruby. It's it's just a few bruises. Okay, that's it. No more exploring for us. I've had it. We always end up getting in some sort of trouble. Shh, Ruby. Listen. What? Ah! Come on, Ruby. Let's get out of here. Well, looks like you've caught us in another messy situation. Oh, by the way, if you haven't figured it out. My name is Hero, and the flying cat is named Ruby. She said she's actually a baby red dragon, but I don't know if I quite believe her. She doesn't care, though. We've been friends for what seems like forever. My grandfather Gwen is an archaeologist who taught us how to explore ancient ruins like this. Well, not exactly like this. <laughs> Grandpa would have a coronary if he saw me in this kind of danger, but you get the idea. I think it's so cool that these dungeons and ruins that time forgot can be found and explored by someone like me. This world is full of wonderful legends. The Blue Star, from which our ancestors supposedly came. Tales of dragons and heroic dragon masters. A magic city that flew in the sky. And the goddess of love and beauty, Althena. All those legends and places have to be true. I believe them more with every step I take in places like this. The world I live in today is the result of things that happened long ago. Someday, I'll gather enough information from ruins like these to prove that, and maybe even get to see the goddess Althena.
ship that moves without wind or sails. Hey, you! Yes! You over there! What are you doing in this area? Who does this Joker think he is? We might ask you the same thing, mister! I wasn't talking to your cat! I was talking to you, boy! Hello! Time for your eye exam! I am not a cat! Knock it off, Ruby! You're gonna get us in trouble! My name is Hero, and this is Ruby! Identify yourself! Certainly. I am White Knight Leo, leader of Althena's Guard, and this is the Dragon Ship Destiny. Now then, listen up. You kids need to evacuate this area. A confrontation is about to take place. I don't want to see any civilians accidentally caught in the middle of this thing. Return to your home immediately. Move it! Helmsman, set a new course. Destination, the Blue Spire.
out to Dragon Master Dine, but this is ridiculous. If Dine were still alive today, I'm sure he'd tell you to stop dreaming about his exciting quest, get off your butt, and set out on your own fantastic adventures. I know you have the courage to be a great hero, just like Dine. So what's holding you back?
Good morning, Alex. You're late again. <laughs> Did Ramus ever find you? You know, he seemed really anxious to track you down. But then he's probably hatching another harebrained scheme. Well, anyway, let's just practice our song for the festival. La so strange. Is something bothering you? You can tell me. Alex, please tell me what's wrong.
Yeah. <laughs> 